The Rolls-Royce you've just ordered, along with the BMW car you're about to pick up, are making their way across the sea to their destination. Luxury imported cars reach you through this mode of transport, aboard the world's largest car carrier ship. This vessel, named Faust, is 230 meters long and 38 meters wide and can hold more than 8,000 cars. Owned by the Norwegian shipping company Wallenius Wilhelmsen, the Faust is an example of advanced technology and luxurious amenities. Every year, around 64 million cars are produced worldwide, a quarter of which are exported via ships like this. Next, the ship will load thousands of luxury cars and set sail for the United States. The total value of the cargo exceeds 65 million US dollars. There is only an eight-hour window to load the cargo, followed by a nine-day journey to Newark, New Jersey. The top priority is to ensure the paint of these new cars is undamaged. The ship has a crew of 22, led by Captain Romit. He is an experienced leader who started as a deck sailor, working his way up through the ranks of third officer, second officer, and chief officer. Before setting sail, route planning is a must as these goods can't withstand any form of mishandling. Loading the cars is a rapid process, overseen by seasoned dispatch personnel. There are 31 drivers responsible for driving these new cars into the hold, and there cannot be any scratches or dents. There are small cars, medium-sized SUVs, and large bulldozers, each type requiring a different parking area. A barcode is placed on the windshield of each car for scanning and registration, which facilitates later tracking. The interior space of the ship is equivalent to 11 football fields. Once the vehicles are parked, they need to be secured with straps at the front and back to prevent collision during the voyage. Each car must be kept at an equal distance from the others, with no room for deviation, and the gap between each car should not be less than one meter. High-value vehicles worth over 500,000 US dollars need to be handled with extra care and secured with six straps, while other vehicles only require four. In the chief officer's ballast control room, he controls the ship's balance by managing the amount of water in the ballast tanks. These tanks consist of 20 interconnected water chambers. If, during loading, one side of the ship is noticeably heavier than the other, water is added to the opposite side to maintain balance. As nightfall approaches, the loading process becomes tense. Workers need to clock out on time and the port's tide will soon recede. If loading isn't completed on time, the departure schedule will be disrupted. Meanwhile, workers begin to check hidden places within the cargo hold to prevent any stowaways as similar situations have happened before. By now, all cars have been loaded on board, the total cargo weight amounting to over 33,000 tons or approximately 36,376 US tons. Now, the journey across the open sea is about to begin. Two pilots are needed to steer the ship away from the dock, and with the assistance of tugboats, they officially enter the shipping lane. By 11 a.m., the world's largest car carrier ship has reached the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Inside the captain's room, a special software system integrates data such as weather conditions and sea current positions and provides reference data for the sailing speed based on these weather factors. Every system has a backup and advanced technology allows the ship to autopilot. In the North Atlantic, the ship has to contend with high winds reaching 60 miles per hour, nearly hurricane strength, and gale force winds whipping up waves as high as a three-story building. Therefore, the staff needs to check the vehicles in the cargo hold to make sure they're securely fastened with no signs of loosening. Usually, in extreme situations, appropriate trade-offs have to be made, Every crew member must be very familiar with the procedure for abandoning ship, so the captain orders a drill for abandoning ship. If seawater floods in, the crew lounge in the ship's hold can be overwhelmed within three minutes. Therefore, when abandoning ship, crew members need to quickly grab life-saving equipment and get to the deck. On the deck, there's a free-fall lifeboat that can fit over 10 people at a time. By pulling the interior switch, it can be launched instantly into the sea. This is the crew's lifeline in emergency situations. On average, two ships per week are damaged due to adverse weather. Ahead lies 33-foot high waves and winds at 60 miles per hour. At this point, crew members can't go on deck as a gust of wind could blow them into the vast sea. In the past 20 years, over 200 ships have sunk in such weather. 
Thus, the engine installation is the greatest asset to ensuring the ship's safety. The entire engine room, three stories tall, houses seven huge cylinders outputting 21,500 horsepower, equivalent to the power of seven locomotives. This enables the massive propeller under the ship to rotate 105 times per minute. Workers must maintain it regularly, as an engine failure would leave the ship helplessly adrift at sea. The third officer on duty in the cockpit, who graduated from naval school just six months ago, is interning on this ship. This is her first encounter with such severe weather, and it is understandably very nerve-wracking. The captain personally inspects the cargo. The loss of a single car can cost tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, so no mistakes can be tolerated. He warns the crew to be extremely careful when checking cars, as each car's fuel tank contains gasoline. If it leaks and catches fire, the ship could become a floating hell. Therefore, the ceiling of the cabin and the engine room are equipped with sensitive sprinkler systems that can spray a fire-extinguishing mixture of carbon dioxide. On the ship, there's a dedicated carbon dioxide room and two carbon dioxide tanks filled with a large amount of carbon dioxide for firefighting. The total amount is 52,000 kilograms, or approximately 57,320 US pounds. Although it can save lives, it can also be lethal. If released, it can cause significant harm to the human body. Therefore, both the cargo hold and engine room have sealed doors to prevent harmful gases from coming into contact with the crew. The world's largest car carrier ship has been sailing at sea for eight days and is a day's voyage away from Newark, New Jersey. However, for the 22 crew members, there's still a six-week journey to return home. They work for 10 weeks and rest for 10 weeks. In their free time, they often choose to work out. Inside the ship, there's spacious passenger accommodation, including a self-service restaurant and a bright lounge, plus a steaming sauna. The kitchen is run by 60-year-old Maria, who is responsible for feeding all 22 people on the ship. With 22 years of chef experience, her specialty is making stir-fried beef. However, in areas with high wind and waves, even cooking can be a safety risk. The rocking ship can cause hot dishes and oil to splash onto oneself. Maria once suffered a fall and fracture due to the ship's swaying and was forced to take two years of medical leave. Five hours later, the storm ceases, but an erroneous warning sounds in the system. The captain needs to dispatch a technical expert to investigate. Located at the very bottom of the cabin, this is where all wastewater is stored. If a crack occurs at the bottom of the tank, untreated sewage would leak into the ocean, causing pollution. Therefore, this ship only uses biodegradable lubricants and one of the cleanest fuels in the industry. Environmental protection is regarded as a top priority. Seawater in the ballast room is also quickly treated. Firstly, a filter removes large particles, then the water is mixed with a non-toxic, light-activated solution. After harmful bacteria are killed, the water is released back into the ocean. Despite numerous high-tech additions, the traditional telescope still plays an irreplaceable role, helping crew members to see everything on the sea surface directly. Even experienced crew members must constantly refine their skills. Therefore, emergency fire drills at sea are of utmost importance. Everyone has to play different roles. Firefighters need to perform rescue operations in dark cabins filled with artificial smoke. Realistic drills like this need to be conducted once a month. If over 25% of the staff changes, the drill must be carried out within 24 hours. Due to the storm, they now need to navigate around it. Prior to final docking, the ship's rudder functionality must undergo testing. Only after everything is confirmed to be in order can the ship proceed towards the harbor. Subsequently, two pilots take charge of the vessel. One pilot is responsible for guiding the ship into the bay, while the other is responsible for securing it in the inner harbor. The harbor is bustling with variously sized cargo ships, and as the ship progresses further into the harbor, the channel becomes narrower. For safety reasons, the pilot decides to cautiously follow behind the cargo ship ahead. Following that, they must pass beneath an arched bridge, which happens to be the world's third longest steel arch bridge. It stands at a mere height of 46 meters. The ship must navigate through the central opening, or else it risks colliding with the mast above. 
Once the ship successfully docks, it is time to unload the vehicles. With that, this voyage has been flawlessly accomplished. Expeditions like this are undertaken five times a year, transporting over 50,000 cars for customers worldwide. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and giving us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in the next episode.